Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Rika and I make videos about language learning, personal growth, this and that out of my life. And I'm very happy to have you here because today I'm going to tell you a story that is very dear to my heart because I used to be a very miserable person. And by miserable, I mean that I felt absolutely negative about myself. I had no outlook on life that was positive. I was barely just existing at the end of the day and... I was just really, really unhappy. And I know that there's a lot of other people that probably feel like this and maybe you are in a similar position as I was back then. And I just want to give an insight how I got out of it because I think it's no place that I wish anyone to be in. It's it's terrible. And I think I have a couple of tips that I can give to you how you can lift yourself out of this. And with this, I would like to start with my story so that you get like an understanding of what I'm talking about. It all started when I hit like teenagehood. I would say generally that I was a, a happy child. I had a good childhood and um, I cannot, you know, put any blame like entirely on growing up in a bad way or anything because that would just not be true. Obviously, there's always some traumatic experience that you have as a child, but I think everybody does have that because I think that's like to some degree what like growing up means is that you go through times that are harder and others that are better. Um, but yeah, when my puberty hit, when I became a teenager, I think that's when all of the the problems that I had manifested. And to start off with, I was extremely fixated on how I looked and in my opinion that was not good. I was extremely body dysmorphic. I really saw things that nobody else saw. For instance, I was of the opinion that I need to save for a nose job because my nose is way too big. Um, that I need to fix my eyes because they're like too small. Like I can, I don't even know how back then this is what I saw, but I recently went through like old journals that I had and this is literally the way that I felt. Like I felt like as I was the ugliest human being in the world. And that translates when you're a teenager to everything because unfortunately, and that is the case, let's say looks do matter. And uh, maybe I wasn't like the classical, I'd say, you know, high school beauty or something like this. But when you feel very ugly about yourself, you also like listen to people making negative comments about you way more, like you fixate on them. I got this like confirmation bias from my environment that I wouldn't have a boyfriend when I was in high school. You know, I, I wouldn't be sort of the the number one pretty girl or something like that. So you feel like, okay, your environment just, you know, is actually proving to you what you anyways think yourself. It's difficult to explain but this is sort of how it was and adding to this obviously you want to like trim the way you look and a thing that sort of then entered that was obsessing over food I was never in like any eating disorder or something like this I would say because in the classical sense of the eating disorders is you know just not what I had or ever was diagnosed with but I was extremely obsessed with food what I ate how much I ate from counting calories to then sort of binging again uh, because I had not allowed myself to eat a lot in like a week to then feeling negative about binging because I felt like wow I'm such a failure I can't even stick to my own plans it was like this continuous downward spiral and it continued up until my early 20s when I really started making a change. In general, I think if you already struggle with these things, you are generally in a, in a bad mood because this is something that like goes throughout your entire day, each day, every day. And I just didn't think at all highly about myself. I was like, okay, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't want to end up just, you know, doing a nine to five job, but this is sort of what, you know, life is like. Like I had a very um, restricted view of what life is. I was like, okay, I'm going to do high school, then I'm maybe going to study and then I'm going to live life and then I'm going to be just staying even more miserable than I am right now. As I said, this continued up until my early 20s when I sort of started realizing, okay, this behavior, it's not good and it's not supposed to be like this. And how did I do that? Like generally, I think I started reaching out to like self-help books. I mean, lots of stuff on the market. I think I started with like Eckhart Tolle and all of sort of those like, you know, change your mindset type of books. And they opened sort of this this world to me that it's like, okay, there's more people than just me who are miserable out there. Because sometimes I thought like, 
I'm the only one who feels like that miserable. Um, and there's something that you can obviously do about it. Um, that just like reading one or two books didn't do the job, right? I It just opened like the possibility to me, which was already really the first step. And from there on it evolved and I summarized this now in like sort of five tips that I have for you because the thing is I did a lot, right? When I started reading all of these like literature, I obviously did a lot of different things. So now pinpointing and saying like it was this one single book, it would be wrong because I suppose at the end of the day, it was the entire process that I was embarking on and a mixture of all, you know, different shifts that I had in my life that at the end of the day made this possible. But before I want to go into this, obviously I need to also indicate what I mean with living my best life now. The thing is like this, I am free of miserable thoughts that I have. I do not obsess over anything, neither my looks nor my food intake nor anything like this. I feel like I am being myself and I feel able to influence my life. And this is what I mean by living my best life. I also do a lot of exciting things, like I am working remotely, often working from other places in the world, but this is just an outer thing, right? I could still be miserable while doing this. And I think this is the important thing that you have to understand. Living your best life doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be, you know, in the fancy hotel, taking photos of yourself, driving this car, being this and that rich. These are all things that you maybe want to achieve, but you can still be pretty miserable whilst obtaining these things, while living that lifestyle. For me, the real freedom and real good life comes with being able to wake up in the morning free of these like negative thoughts weighing down on me that constantly tell me I'm not good enough. And the best life for me is to be free from this and feeling capable and knowing myself, having my standards and being in an environment that is like appreciative of me and what I do and to just get generally be like be able to be at the end of the day um, but yeah now I don't want to make it too exciting let's jump into the five tips that I have for you that helped me to get to this point and I'm going to start with the mindset shift so shifting your mindset um, is I think the key here because there is this um, me metaphor of Either you see the glass is half empty or it's half full. And I used to be a like half empty thinker. Um, and this is how I approached life. I was a pessimist, right? Everything that I approached was like, oh, it's anyways not going to work out. I'm too ugly for this. I'm too like this for that and so on. It's not something you can change from one day to the next. And it's also not something that just happens in theory, like telling yourself, oh, I'm now positive. Um, but it's being optimistic by doing optimistic things every single day. And things that you can do uh, here are, for instance, gratitude. Just have a five minute gratitude session in the morning and write things that you're grateful for down. What this will do is that it will shift your mindset towards the good things and that will reciprocate throughout like your whole life. Because if you start seeing things more optimistically, then likely you will also be more successful at them. You will be more outgoing. You will approach things. You will be more likely to take responsibility because you're not already writing it off saying like, ah, oh, that's not for me because I'm not worthy of it, right? So optimism is the key resource to starting to evolve as who you are as a person, because otherwise you will just be sort of kept down by your pessimism. The next thing is like daily actions and reactions. So how do you react to a thing? If something is not working out, it was according to what you wanted to get done. How do you react? Are you like seeing this as like a conspiracy against you personally and life is just against you? Or are you saying, well, this is how life is. Let me make another plan, right? So it is about how you approach every single thing in your life, however small it might be. And if you have a bit more optimistic mindset towards it, then your whole world literally will be much more bright. I can tell you that. And another mindset shift that I can really recommend is that you stop seeing life as like a constant competition. Like how good are you? How beautiful are you? How much of this, this and that are you? But try and see it as a learning experience because this is at the end what it actually is, right? You come into this world and you have to learn how to walk and you won't be able to walk when you're born. You will have to learn it, you will fall, then you get up and you fall and now you can walk, right? And this is how life is with like all other things as well. It's 
a learning experience and you're here to learn. So if you make mistakes, if you fail at things, do not see it as like you being not worthy, you being bad at something, but see it as you just, you know, being human and learning. Then step number two and congratulations, you're doing it already, is for me to to read or watch like the stories of other people. I mean, there's countless books out there, autobiographies of people that are successful, for instance, or whatever you define as success and what you want to reach. And there's people on the internet like me that make videos. And from my story, you can see like I made it from like miserable to now being like sort of a positive and optimistic person that is like content and happy. And that shows that you can do it too, because there's nothing special about me. It's just, I'm sharing this with you and you can see, okay, she did it I can do it too because you can right this is like um, nothing that is sort of reserved for uh, special people but I'm just like somebody and I made it so you can do it too so this is what I think also helped me a lot is seeing that I'm not alone it is normal because often I also felt like awkward and like sort of ah you know it's just me I'm like this weirdo I can't get my life together everybody else can it's not true like a lot of people feel this way you're not alone and already seeing that there's others that can sort of motivate you at least give you like this feeling of like I'm not alone and there's others who already made it, I'm going to be able to make it too. Number three, I stopped trying to impress others with all that I did. And because this was a great thing of my past was that I was constantly trying to impress other people with what I was doing, right? I was, you know, always thinking about how should I behave that this isn't that person thinks I'm like this isn't that. And that at the end of the day gives like the power of how you feel to others because you will make your self-worth dependent on somebody else in the world who will sort of think a certain way about you. And number one about this is like most people are exactly like this as well. They think about themselves and how others will react to them. They barely think of, oh, let me see what she's doing. Oh, now I'm going to evaluate this as so-and-so. No, like everybody's like mainly concerned with themselves. This is just how it is. This is how humans are. And there's nobody paying that close attention to you as you might think. I, th I know often we think like people are like seeing the small faults in us but often it's just us who see it so first of all the logic behind it doesn't even make sense however in the world that we live in with the social media with like sharing the whole time what life we live who we are and so on it tends to be this way that we really try and impress others the whole time and what helped me with this was like literally just quitting social media so I completely deleted my my sharing platforms besides now YouTube um, and I therefore don't share of myself in a way that I can think of like oh what do others want to see and I also don't see what others are doing the whole time and that also made me stop comparing myself every single day so often because if you don't use social media there's just way fewer people to to compare yourself to and especially not in this like sort of toxic way of like unrealistic life standards unrealistic body culture you know lots of stuff on Instagram is simply fake and we still like compare ourselves against it but this is a game that will will be lost we will lose in it because it's not even real right so I can just tell you either adapt your social media in a way that you don't use it too often and that you don't see a lot of these like triggering things whatever they may be for you or just delete it also made a video about it you can check it out number four is becoming unapologetic with my standards um, this is a bit more maybe in detail, but what I mean by this is the following. I, for my case, I used to be swept around by others. Like I had people telling me like mean stuff straight to my face and I didn't do anything about it, right? And what I mean by setting standards is like, how do you allow other people to treat you? You will never be able to change really others' behavior. I mean, you can always give feedback to others. They will at the end of the day decide how they are, treat other people, but you can decide who's gonna be in your environment environment and who can treat you in what way by setting boundaries by having standards and communicating them and that also helps if you're like for instance uh, dating or whatever looking for friends if you have like standards and you say like for you trust is important and loyalty is important then you will have to tick these boxes right if you say like okay ghosting for you which it generally is like um uh, 
you know, a terrible thing. But if you say like you don't want to uh, be with people that do not answer you on WhatsApp for like five days, that is your standard. And if somebody does this, you can say, okay, this is a type of person that I don't want to spend my time with because it makes me feel like this, this and that. This can be very individual, right? And everybody has their own types of standards, but it's important to know what you envision yourself to be and what treatment you expect from others and to be stern with it. And you do not have to like sort of fight with others about it, but it's easier than for you to default to a decision and say like, well, I don't want to be in that group anymore because it is not good for me, right? And that's also for friends. If you say like, you don't want friends that gossip about you and you are like in a group of friends that gossip about you, that's just going to make you miserable because you always ask yourself like, why are they doing this? This is not what I feel like I deserve or whatever. But then the decision is up to you to make to exert your boundaries and get out of this. And I can tell you one thing, since I sort of implemented these like sort of standard lists to my life, it was much easier because I didn't have to always like think about that I was angry about this and that behavior and so on. I was able to sort of have standards and if somebody did something against the standards, I'd either communicate to this person, hey, listen, this is not how you talk to me, or I would make my decision say like, okay, this is not a group of people that I want to spend time with and then it's done and I can move on, right? You don't have to waste your time on thinking about it. And then last but not least, and this is like also very important for me, was starting to work out regularly. And I had my whole own story to get there because I always wanted to work out regularly, but mainly for like vanity reasons and looking a certain way and so on. I never thought of it as something that is good for your mind. And actually now at this point, working out for me, it's like medicine for my soul, for my mental health. It brings my creativity out. It makes me able to cope with stressful situations in the day. And this is what I work out for. To be honest with you, obviously that's a nice side effect that, you know, it does certain things to your body, but that should never be the reason why you work out. Because at the end of the day, I think working out is real self-care because it's like doing great stuff for your health. It's doing great stuff for your mind and also being able to stick to a routine and having a routine and working out shows you that you're capable of you know doing uncomfortable things because not gonna lie to you still to this day often before going to work out I'm like nah I really don't want to go I want to stay in bed I want to just be lazy and every single time I overcome myself overcome the spirit of laziness and do it and that just is like telling me over and over again I'm capable I'm capable of sort of having my mind under control, choosing the right things for me. I just think this is like something that really was the foundation at the end of the day with all of the things that I did, like reading, working on myself, trying to get over it. But working out was, yeah, it, it, it's a game changer. And I can really recommend you to try and shed a different light on it if you had difficulties up until now to stick to a regular routine, try and shift your mind on why you should do it because I really, I cannot recommend it enough. And that brings me to the end of this video. So question is now, am I always happy and never unhappy? No, obviously not. I think also we need to have realistic standards as humans, we go through emotions within a day, within our lives. There's times that are better, times that are worse. But I am definitely out of this like miserable hole that I was in that was like, filled with self-hate, body dysmorphia, thinking negatively about my life, myself and my future outlook. And just getting rid of this already makes me living my best life. I'm still working on myself. I'm learning every day. I'm failing as does everyone else. Um, but I think I acquired the right mindset to sort of live with all of this. And I hope that this video was of help to you. And if you liked it, I would really appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe. And then I see you on my channel very soon. Bye.